Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Faces of Mass Golf. I'm Stephen Hanjack, and today I'm joined by Massachusetts award-winning author Roland Marullo. Welcome, Roland. Hey, nice to be here, Stephen. So if I have it correct, you were born in Boston, raised in Revere, and now you're living out in Williamsburg, and most importantly, you're a mass golfer? Exactly right on all counts. Great. Um, and I see you've written 24 books, including several golf books, um, Passion for Golf, Golfing with God, The Italian Summer, and The Ten Commandments of Golf Etiquette, which um, I think that that title stands out a bit. So what, uh, what inspired you to write that one? Playing behind very slow people. <laughs> I felt like, you know, the, I'm, I'm certainly not good enough to, to give golf lessons, but I do pay attention to the etiquette of the game. And I feel like if you get to be fairly good, really what matters is the etiquette. If you know the etiquette, you can play with just about anybody. And like a lot of people, it drives me crazy if I get behind somebody or a group that's just unbelievably slow and, and doesn't really pay attention, doesn't rake the bunkers, doesn't, doesn't look behind them. So honestly, that's where that book came from. Um, I also saw that you, you've written a number of articles and recorded podcasts and done a bunch of other work for Golf Digest. What's that experience been like? Golf Digest, more Golf World. When there was a Golf World, TNL Golf, Lynx. I loved it. I loved especially writing for Golf World. I had a great relationship with the guys there. And I do long feature pieces where um, I'd get to play a great golf course, but much of the piece would be about the place, the culture, the food, getting there, and a little bit about, you know, this is a dog leg par four uphill to a protected green kind of stuff. But I loved it. I met some great people. I got to play courses that I probably never would have been able to play at. It was a huge thrill for me. Is there any one that stood out? Could be the European club, <clears throat> excuse me, the European club in Ireland. Um, but I played Sand Hills. I played Oakmont. I played Cabot Links. Um, but the European club and Pat Ruddy, the guy who designed it and owns it, was really, really special. I'd never met somebody who loves golf more than I do, except maybe Pat Ruddy. <laughs> Have you had the chance to work with me or play with any other notable writers or, or notable individuals in the game of golf? Yes, I have um, writers mostly. Bill Fields, Jaime Diaz, Bob Carney, Tim Murphy, who used to be the uh, senior editor at uh, Golf World, and a bunch of other people I can't think of right now. But those guys are just, um, once or twice a year, I'd go down to New Haven and play with all the people at Golf World. And they're just a wonderful bunch of people. And uh, I thought it was a great magazine. That's great. Um, how about uh, growing up in Massachusetts? Where did you, where'd you learn the game? Where did you start playing? What was that like? You know, there's no courses in Revere and uh, no courses really close by. My dad was a weekend hacker who really loved golf, but you know, if he could play nine holes a week, that was a big thrill for him. And he was kind enough when I was 15, 16 to let me play with him and his brothers. Um, you know, we play public nine hole courses around north of Boston, nothing special. Um, and then I stopped for a long time. I didn't really pick it up again until I was in my mid forties. I had back surgery. I worked overseas. Uh, I was a carpenter and, and then um, just didn't, you know, I play once or twice a year with my wife. But in, um, when we had our first child, I was 45 and I got back into golf and I got back in with a gigantic passion. I mean, I just went crazy for golf. Yeah. So was that, were you in Williamsburg at that point or where, where, where did you start playing once, uh, once yeah. you started picking up? We were in Williamsburg and I played at a Worthington, which is a beautiful little nine hole course way up in the hills, yep. joined the men's league, played a little bit at Edge Hill, which is a very small course. A guy cut out of an old dairy farm. It might be 18 holes now, but it was nine then. And then I started to venture out when I got to be, you know, half decent. Um, I started to play a little bit farther away. And my favorite course where I'm a member now is Crump and Fox. Yeah, excellent. I was just going to ask, you know, uh, so outside of Crump and Fox, what, uh, what, what other courses in Massachusetts do you really circle on the list when, when you got that lined up? I've had some great experiences. Uh, Winchester Country Club is a favorite for me. Yeah. I like Red Tail. Um, 
I like Westover, which is a Muni, 18 hole Muni in Ludlow. It's a really nice golf course. It can be a little crowded, but I really like it. Grant Links outside of Boston. I love, I played when they first opened and wrote them up for, I think, TNL Golf. And I love that golf course. Um, Kettle Brook is another public course I really like outside of Worcester. I still have a lot of friends and cousins in Revere. And um, if we want to meet halfway, we meet at Kettle Brook. Yeah. So one of the things I've noticed during this, this global pandemic is how special a round of golf can be. And I mean, with a lot of your writing, so much of it is inspirational. Um, I, I know I'm not going to take a round for granted ever again. Uh, would you say you feel the same? And do you, do you feel um, another book along the, coming up? I feel absolutely the same. I don't know about another book. Um, <laughs> Golfing with God is a kind of fantastical book. It begins in heaven and it comes down to four great resorts in the American Southeast. And that's option for film. So if they actually ever make that into a film, maybe I'll have some other adventures. But um, I think the virus situation has made us appreciate everything more. I really do. We took, we have, we have such a beautiful life. If you can afford to play golf, financially or time wise or you have physically you can play that's an unbelievable gift and i think sure you know if you play 50 rounds a year or something you might start to take that for granted yeah <coughs> excuse me so i think it's going to make us appreciate everything absolutely couldn't agree more um and you know kind of getting back a little bit you had mentioned uh the european club um, so you've obviously traveled a bunch, played a number of places around the world. Do you have anything circled that you haven't yet played that, you know, once this is all lifted and, you know, as times change, you, uh, you hope to get to? Worldwide, you mean? Yeah. I'd like to, I never, I never played much in England and Scotland and I'd like to go and I, just my mentality, I don't have a, a particular urge to play the old course at St. Andrews or the soup, you know, Turnberry or anything like that. I just like to go up there and, and play in a place where golf has been played for 500 years, where the people love the game and drive around and play different golf courses in England and Wales and Scotland. I've played a lot in Italy and I, and I think, I think it's a little bit of a, I hate the term hidden gem, but it, it really is. Golf in Italy is incredible. And um, I certainly like to go and play. I've never played in Sardinia. I played the mainland from the Alps down all the way down to the heel of the boot and a lot around Rome. So I'd like to go back and play some more there. The food, you know, the food at the turn is not a hamburger and a hot dog. It's, <laughs> it's usually really something really nice. So that's a, an extra part of the enjoyment. Speaking of that, I mean, you know, Americans in general don't hear a lot about Italian golf. What are the courses like? Are they similar to what we have out here? Is there any yeah. new features? The unique feature would be the food. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And there's good courses in, in dog tracks. You know, I played both. There's some around Rome, Marco Simone, where the Ryder Cup is going to be held, is my favorite. It's a spectacular golf course. And you wouldn't know you, wouldn't know you were in Italy. You, you could be anywhere. It's just beautiful golf. There are a couple of courses, uh, Acqua Santa outside Rome. You're playing along and all of a sudden you crest the hill and you see the dome of St. Peter's Basilica, you know, that's not going to happen at Taconic. You know what I mean? <laughs> so um, I found them to be less crowded in general because golf is not a super popular sport there. Mm -hmm. um, but really there's the international language of golf. If you know how to play and how to act on the course, it's really the same. I played in Russia. I played in uh, different France, Italy, uh, and the etiquette is the same wherever you go. Yeah. How about Massachusetts? Anything that you haven't yet played and, and hoping you get the invite to? Yeah. Myopia, Hunt Club, Farm Neck I would be the two at the top of the list. But there's, you know, there's so many. You could just spend your whole life in Massachusetts. I mean, I, I played the Cape Cod National. I, I just really... Um, I, the only, my only complaint about Massachusetts is that the season is too short. Yeah. You know, we all suffer from that. It's just this year, it's already, you know, it's kind of golf weather, not today around here, but um, right. I wish we had a little more time around here. That's it. Exactly. 
Um, so getting back to the books a little bit, which one was most enjoyable for you to experience or write about, you know, more specifically with the golf books that you've written? I think it would be between Golfing with God yeah. and uh, The Italian Summer. The Italian Summer, we rented a house near Lake Como and played, uh, I played a bunch of courses around there and wrote about them. And uh, Golfing with God, Paul East Plantation at the, tier, the southern end of Myrtle Beach. Is, uh, a lot of the book is set there. Um, Chateau Elan in Georgia is another place where it's set, the Greenbrier. I was fortunate enough to play. And uh, there's one in Virginia that I can't remember the name of. But, you know, that was such a fun book to write. Just playing golf and making up stories about it, it was great. If someone hasn't read your work before, you know, do you have a, one of the golf books that you would suggest they start with or um, are they if all? If they want fiction, I would say Golfing with God. Yeah. And if they want nonfiction, travel, food, golf, I'd say The Italian Summer. Perfect. Yeah. And where can they go about finding all, all of your books? They're all on Amazon. Yeah. Um, my friend Peter Sano has got a little publishing house in Georgetown, Massachusetts called PFP. And he brings out uh, some of those additions to The Italian Summer. Uh, golf etiquette. Um, they're not hard to find. Just go on Amazon. You find them right away. I go on my website. Excellent. Well, again, we thank you so much for the time today. Um, we encourage all all the followers to to make sure you follow us on all of our social media accounts at Play Mass Golf. Um, and hopefully, we bump into you on the course later this year. That'd be great. And I just want to say I appreciate you guys mentioning books. There's a lot of great golf books out there, and it really was something that didn't get enough attention. And I really appreciate that.